had yet. She had the beginning symptoms, but she had the sore throat. She had coughing, all of that. So we're really, really worried, especially since I'm pregnant. So good. I've got YouTube going here. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> Hi, Jaya Cache. I got someone from the Bronx. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. I'm really worried about everyone in New York because you guys have it so bad here. It's bad here in Washington too. So it's kind of, kind of crazy. So 16 days of isolation in Greece. That is crazy. <laughs> I've been self-isolating for almost a month now just because I'm pregnant. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to risk this at all. So that, that's where we're at with that. So over on this side, hi, Lindsay and Ashley. Hey, Day. Day's on here. That's my teddy bear. <laughs> hi, Sarah, Veronica. Okay, so what I'll do, you guys, is I'm going to go ahead and answer some of your questions that you posted on YouTube and then Instagram, and then we're going to chat, and you guys can ask me whatever questions you want on here, and I'll try to go through as many as we can. I'll do demos. I'll answer questions, all of that uh, great stuff. So on the Makeup Geek Instagram, um, Melissa Valenstein said, as you get older and you're 40, what makeup products should you stop using? None of them. <laughs> When you hit a certain age, everyone's like, you can't wear this. You can't wear that. Yes, you can. I'm going to get up here. Yes, you can. You guys hear me? Yes, you can. <laughs> the only thing I would say is to change your routine as you get older is to go with less matte finishes on your face. Try to go with something a little more satin, a little bit more dewy. But all of these myths that you can't wear shimmer shadows, you can't wear foiled shadows, you can't wear color. I call bullshit on. I'm just going to say it right there. It is bullshit. <laughs> you can wear anything that you want at any age that you feel comfortable with. Just try to change your um, your foundation to a little lighter, a little bit more dewy, because as we age, we tend to get more dry. So that's the only thing that I would say there. Um, Let's see. What other questions on here? Um, Trolley1111, her question is on Instagram. I just received mug eyeshadows. What is your favorite combination for green eyes? So that is our class. Our next one is going to be all about eye colors. Best eyeshadows for blue eyes, for green eyes, for brown and hazel eyes, and then black eyes as well. So um, I will say for green eyes, you want to go opposite of the color wheel. So here's what I have, you guys. Okay. Hopefully you can see it with glare. Here's green eyes right here. If you want to make them pop, Generally, a rule of thumb is going to go over across here. Brandy, hi, I see your question. Best foundation tip. I'll get to that in just a second. So green over here, you're going to go opposite. You're going to go in the pinks and plums right here. This is where you want to be for green eyes. So if I have the matrix system, I'm going to go in with something like maybe my corals. I can do some pinks here. If you want to go with more neutrals, I would say go with colors that are very plum. So bitten, um, getting figgy with it somewhere in here. Do you guys see how these neutrals are very plum and kind of pink based? You can also go in here a little bit with the purples, like vintage, prim and proper, something in here. But these look great on green eyes. Um, so Brandy's question was foundation for textured skin. Okay, I covered that in my demonstration just a minute ago. If you guys have textured skin... The best thing, the way to apply foundation is honestly not with a brush unless you're stippling it. So most of us do a foundation. I don't know. We've got like a brush like this. We start buffing it in and all that. It can get in the textured parts. But what I like to do is take foundation and I take something that's super thin and pigmented. And um, I put it on my hand and I take a wet brush, wet brush, slightly damp sponge. <laughs> And I'm going to pick up that foundation on here. If I have um, spots in here, so let's show, let me show you guys around my nose. This is a crevice, right? So we'll pretend that we've got like deep, you know, pockets in here or acne scars and things like that. You're going to take the foundation with your damp sponge and you're going to press it in there to try to fill in that spot that's textured. And another trick is, is if you had textured spots, like um, I know a lot of us get like, I get pores in here and such. Um, and sometimes we get acne scarring up here on our cheeks, on our chin. Try not to use shimmer where you have texture. Shimmer is going to reflect. Let me show you. Let, let's do a, a foiled shadow. Okay. So let's pretend I've got in the spotlight is a shimmery shadow. If you apply shimmer on texture, it's going to show up. Let me show you my crusty knuckles. So here's my knuckles. <laughs> They're kind of dry. I've been washing my hands a lot. Been washing them, you guys. <laughs> They're dry and crusty. 
Do you see how down here it looks very smooth and all that, but look what happens up here on my knuckle where it's textured. It, it accentuates my crevices and my knuckles. So you want to avoid shimmer where you have texture. Keep the shimmer on the inner part of the eye, above the lip, somewhere else where you may not have textured and leave it kind of a matte finish. So hopefully that helps a little bit. The other trick you can do is place a primer down first. That's more of a putty one. This is expensive. I got a small size at um, Sephora because it is less expensive, but the Tatcha Silk Canvas, anything that's like a kind of putty type, because I'm not trying to flip you guys off. Do you guys see the kind of putty one? If you put that down first, it's going to smooth out the skin. So when I put foundation on top, it's going to sit on top of that primer. So that can help to try to choose something that has, um, if you're not allergic to it, it'll say dimethicone is the ingredient. Dimethicones are very thick and they kind of fill in texture. So that's kind of another way for that. <laughs> um, what's another question we have over here on the Make of Geek one? Hold on, let me see. Um, what is our top one over here? What? Uh, sorry, I want to make sure I get one that's most voted in here. You guys voted on a lot of these. <laughs> um, it is not pulling up. Let's go over here to YouTube. Okay, so over on YouTube, um, Vero RG asked eyeshadow. How do you make colorful eyeshadow pop out and be bright? Do we do layers or is it just a good quality? It's a couple different things. So if I have a bright colored shadow. A lot of it can be in the pigmentation of the shadow that you buy. Some um, brands like more sheer formulations, some like more pigmented. The Makeup Geek ones are pretty pigmented, so they are going to be very bright. Um, like if I go in here with, this is probably one of our brightest ones. We have powder pigments as well. This is Back to the Fuchsia. So let me show you. Here's Back to the Fuchsia. If you want your bright eyeshadows to pop, let me do it down here so you guys can see. I'm going to swatch a couple times. So if you want these to pop really well, you're going to do a couple layers. But also what you guys can do is you can apply a cream underneath. So you can take a lipstick I've got. Um, so for example, let me show you guys this. This is the lipstick in vain. And look, it's a, where can I do this? We'll do it down here. <laughs> okay, so here's a cream of some sort. It's a lipstick, it's a cream pencil, it's an eyeliner, anything that's a bright color cream. What happens if you put this down first, and I'm blending it out with my finger, so there's vein lipstick. If I want a bright color to pop even more, I'm going to take the powder and set it on top. So here's back to the fuchsia. I'm putting it on there and it's going to make it pop just a little bit more. Look how saturated that color is. So that's one step. And then honestly, just to layer it is going to make everything pop quite a bit more. So that would be my tip on there. I'll ask a couple questions on here and then I'll go back. Charming Guru on Instagram is asking, what is the difference between eye primer and eye base? Honestly, they're the same thing. Companies label them differently. It's all in how companies want to market it, what kind of wording that they want to use based on their formula, but they're pretty much the same thing. All it is is it's going to be something kind of tacky to get your shadows to stick to. Now, I will say this, when you guys put your eyeshadow on, um, it's better if you do a layer of powder first in a natural skin tone. So if you put an eye primer down, I've got like my Urban Decay Primer Potion, I've got my P. Louise um, base that a lot of people like. I like to take a shadow that's close to my skin. This is Banana Split. I'm going to take a brush, a dome brush. We're going to put this down as a base to kind of set everything because what happens if you have a sticky base and you're putting shadow on top, it'll stick to it and it'll get blotchy. So when you guys are like, oh, these shadows, I can't blend them or um, why does it stick in some spots? Why is it not smooth? It's because you've you've got a sticky base underneath, whether it's oil on your lids or you have a primer and this powder is sticking to it, but it's not sticking to your skin because that's nice and dry and smooth. Does that make sense? So always put down just a really light layer of powder first and then go in with your eyeshadows and put it on top. It's going to blend a lot more easily. <laughs> Um, Damaris Grace says, will you be coming out with a foundation? I love your products. Oh, you're from Chelan, Washington. I know where that's at. Yes, we are. It's slated for 2021. 
Um, it was supposed to come out several years ago. We had issues with the lab and then the formula oxidized really bad. And so I had to scratch the whole thing and we're starting from scratch. So that's coming 2021. <laughs> Back over here to YouTube comments. Loyal Kitty 6676. Hi, Loyal Kitty. I don't know if you're watching on here. She said, how to hide dark circles in bags. I'm finding applying primer and a concealer is working, but it's still noticeable. So I demonstrated that in the last one. So I'm not going to demonstrate it a ton, but I showed in the last video, if you guys missed it, if you have dark circles, if you apply a light concealer on top like this, it's going to still hide underneath. You need to go in with something orangey colored. So an orange or a peach, like I have this one here. It's a Make a Geek prototype that we're trying to come out with. Please excuse that it's very dirty. But something orange or peach based like this, when you have dark circles that are in this tone, they're blue, they're purple, they're kind of gray under here. If you do something orangey, can you guys see that? It's going to counteract the blueness and kind of hide it because it's opposite on the color wheel. So dark circles are generally somewhere in this range. They look like here. If they get light, they're kind of like this shade. So to counteract it, you can go opposite, which is your kind of peaches, your oranges, anywhere that's across the color wheel here from where your dark circles are, it's going to um, counteract it. So just a light layer and then put foundation on top and that's going to hide it. So um, let's see. <laughs> Best way, this is from Chloe, Chloe on YouTube. Hi, Chloe. Best way to keep under eyes from creasing. She said, I'm only 21 and my under eyes crease even before I have time to set them. So what you're going to do, it may be that your foundation may be a little bit oily, but we all have, I'm going to get really close to you guys. So sorry, you get to see up close and personal my skin. Do you see how I've got a little divot here? Most of us do. We've got kind of some stuff under here. What I like to do, and I've done this technique a lot of times, but I'm going to demonstrate it again, is I take my foundation with this brush or sponge. Let's use a sponge. Take your sponge. It's nice and wet, so it's really soft. Do you see how, like, this is therapeutic? <laughs> if you guys are stressed out, take your sponge and just go at it. <laughs> take your sponge and your foundation... I'm going to get up in here. I'm going to press, 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 press. The more you press this down and blend it, the more it's going to get in that crevice. But now before it creases, take that same um, sponge. We're going to go in with our loose powder. You could do pressed powder too, but I prefer loose for this just because you have more control. Take it on your sponge, wipe it off. You're gonna set under here. I'm really pressing it. Do you guys see that? I am not playing. I'm like getting in there. This is gonna squish everything down and help it from creasing because I'm setting it with powder, but I'm doing just a little bit and I'm really using that damn sponge to get in there so that way it doesn't crease. So try that. If you still have super oily skin and it's still creasing after that, then what I would say is to put just a dab of powder down first to soak up all that oil and then go in with your foundation. All of this using a damp sponge. This is the way to go. If you use a brush, it can pull off the foundation and make it streaky too. So that's what I recommend as a sponge. <laughs> Questions up here for you guys. Um, Laura P over here on Instagram says, I have dry and oily skin. Which one do you recommend? I have a few favorite foundations for you guys. It, um, this is an old school one. Don't judge me. It still works. Still great. It's old school, but I love it. <laughs> the Estee Lauder double, double Wear. Let me show Instagram. This is great for combination to oily skin because it's kind of a matte formula. If you have dry skin, I don't recommend this. But if you have oily in combination, I really like this one. If you have oily to combination skin too and you want a cheaper alternative at drugstores, you have the... Boots number seven, beautifully matte. I really like that one. Um, if you guys have dry to um, mature skin, this is a more um, oily finish one. I talk about this all the time as the Derma Blend, the Flawless Creator. It's a drop foundation. This is my favorite um, for dry skin because it has oil blended in there. It's very pigmented, so a little goes a long way. You can't slather your face in a little bit. Buff, buff, buff. Really, really good. Um, the other one I was liking was the Anastasia one. This one was pretty good. Where did it go? Uh, 
There's my Anastasia. Here it is. I like this one a lot too. The um, Luminous Foundation. I like this one for dry decombination. For oily skin, I think it might be a little bit too, uh, too dewy. But I like that one a lot too. So those are some of my favorite ones. Drugstore, I like the Boots brand. I think it's great. Um, it's been a while since I tried the... Um, oh, I have one more. The L'Oreal True Match isn't bad either. Not my favorite, but still pretty good. But this one I feel like is great for more oily skin, in my opinion. Can you guys see that? I know my light's kind of like, whew, grinding there. <laughs> um, what is a cheaper version of Dermablend Foundation? I wish I knew. I am working on one for Makeup Geek. I really am. I'm trying to do more colors, a little bit better packaging, but kind of a similar idea where it's a dropper foundation, um, very pigmented and such. I wish I knew if anyone knows of any, please comment here so that way we can help each other out. So um, Daphne is saying, should lip color and blush match with warm and cool? So me personally, when it comes to blushes, um, I like to go with my skin tone. So for me, I'm neutral to warm. I have a lot of yellow undertone to my skin. Um, I have, I'm not as cool tone, like more pink. I have a bit more yellow. So I like doing warm blushes. So I like having, where are my makeup geek blushes? We'll use the matrix system just for example. Like we do have blushes that are launching soon. Um, so if you have warm skin, I like blushes that are in here, kind of your corals, your oranges, your peaches. If you have cool tone skin where you have a lot of blue undertones, some pink to your skin, I would go with more pink blushes because it's going to blend in and match your skin a little bit more. If you want your blush to pop, go the opposite. So let me show you guys, let me demo it. So we're gonna use, you can use your eyeshadows as blushes. This is Pinky Promise. So I have a lot of yellow in my skin right now. If I want a blush to really pop, and stand out and I want that to be the focal point and my eyes are very like I have no eyeshadow on it's very neutral I'm gonna use something like this because it's the opposite of my skin tone so I'm gonna take a brush like this pick up some of that it's kind of pigmented so we dab off some let me put some on here so this is pinky promise do you see how bright this blush is looking on me because it's the opposite of my skin tone pinks are a little bit more cool so it's popping a lot because it's going against the yellow in my skin. If I want it to be more natural and blended, I want it to flood, flood in, flow in with my skin, we're gonna use corals. So then we're, I'm gonna go in with like peach for the stars, this guy here. This has warmth to it versus cool. Do you see the difference? So let me show you what this looks like. Okay, so here's peach for the stars. Tap off because these are pigmented. If I put this on this side, you could still see it, but do you see how it's blending into my skin? I think I put too much on, but do you see how it's kind of blending into my skin a little bit? It's matching the warmth on there. So it's just honestly a preference, but I like to um, go with the undertone of my skin, if that makes sense. <laughs> Hi from Seattle over here. What other makeup questions you have? Um, Faye Charles, can I use a lip liner as blush? I don't know if I would use a lip liner, but you can use lipsticks. If you have a creamy lipstick, I just did it in the last video, so I won't do it again here. But if you have any sort of cream lipstick, you guys can use this as a cream blush. It's a similar formula. Let me grab a different one because that I used a lot. This is Naive. Okay, so Naive lipstick. Looks like this you can use that as a cream blush. And all you have to do is just take a couple fingers and just dab it on. So if you don't have any cream blushes, just use a lipstick. Super, super easy. Annie Stokes over here on Instagram is asking, any tips on using dark, bold shimmer shadows? I always have trouble using them um, other than just liner. So anytime you guys use a dark color, um, so if we're doing like, um, I don't know, corrupt, and you're using a dark color, maybe you wanna do a smoky. I go lighter um, up the matrix system to go to blend it out. So it's all about surrounding dark colors with lighter ones. So if I'm gonna go in with like, what is this, Americano, it's a really, really dark brown. If I'm gonna blend that out on my skin, let me do it down here because my hands are so dry. I've been washing them like crazy. 
Let's do it on my arm. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do two coats. So you guys can really see this color. Okay, so I've got like Americanos, a nice rich dark brown. I've got this all over the lid and you're like, ah, oh, it looks so harsh. Go up a couple lightness. So here's our dark row down here. I'm gonna go up a couple. Let's go in with like, let's do Honey Badger. It's kind of a warm brown. And you're gonna blend around it with that lighter color. You know what I'm saying? Like surround your darkness with medium and, and lighter shades. Let's do Cocoa Bear. There we go. Kind of went up there. So I'm going to surround it with just kind of go lighter around the darkness. I hope that makes sense. And then as always, if you're doing a really dark eye, do your foundation last or put down some sort of guard so it doesn't get all over your face too. Cheryl over here, how do you stop making, how do you stop makeup transferring to my phone? It's hard. I feel you on this one. I always use a speaker button because as soon as I hold it up, it gets on there. It's probably because um, your face is wet. You know, you have natural moisture on your skin, natural oils and stuff. So you'd have to put down powder or just hold the phone off. That's probably the best trick for me. I always use speaker phone because I, I get it off and it's smeared. It's all over. And then I put it, you know, in my pocket. It gets on my clothes. It's horrible. <laughs> Hi, makeup by So Stuffy. How are you today? <laughs> nice to see you let me go back here on youtube let's see cynthia sevilla is asking no matter what i do my makeup only lasts a couple hours my skin eats it up completely i've tried primers i've tried everything um try to use have you used like the urban decay setting spray that one works really good if it's disappearing throughout the day it's probably your oily skin i would put foundation down first i'm sorry put powder down first and then your foundation and I demonstrated that in the last video too, if you guys want to check it out. But if your makeup is melting off, you have to get powder down first on your skin to soak up your oils. So the oils don't break down the foundation and make it slide off throughout the day. So that's going to be the best um, option there. Put a little bit of loose powder down on your face first, right here in the center, right here. Put your foundation on. And then if you're really oily, pack more powder on a little bit. Just do it in very light layers so it doesn't get too thick and cakey. So yes, <laughs> um, how do we find, sorry, wait, last, hold on, Na, Nas Argoon, how do we find the best lip colors for different skin tone? So for different skin tones, usually fair skin, if you want um, something more natural, you want it to be very soft, like right now I'm wearing Shy, it's my go-to, I think it looks great on every skin tone, but the deeper your skin goes, generally you can handle more pigment and more darkness so for example and it's it works it's just a it's not really a hard set rule but generally for deeper skin tones I, I can go something like this where it's very rich very pigmented because the depth of that beautiful skin can handle something rich like this if i were to put this color on my skin i will show you this is risque let me do it with a brush so i can feather it in okay so i just take Where's my lip brush? Hold on, guys. Let's do, oh, here we go. Yes. Okay, so I've got a little lip brush. I'm going to apply it this way to kind of apply it like a stain. So this is risque. If I do this on my skin, it's going to pop more because my skin's so light. You could still wear it, but do you see how intense of a color that is? It's really strong because my skin is light. So you could still pull it off, obviously, but try to get um, lip colors that if you're if you have fair skin, go a little bit lighter. If you have deep skin, go richer, more pigmented. Like another one that would work great for deep skin would be Lively is a really pretty one. Let's see, actually this one is good too, Vein. Vein is like a nice, rich, bright purple. This looks great on deep skin because it's so pigmented and so rich. And so is this one. Am I making sense, you guys? This would be more like medium to deep skin if you want something that's a little bit softer and natural. For fair skin, I would go in with something like Shy or um, Naive is a nice, soft, peachy color. This could work on deep skin as well, but it's gonna show up pretty light. That's naive. But if you want something nudie, natural, 
for fair skin, the lighter you go, the better. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, what else do we have over here? Let me pull up the questions over here on, um, let's see, on Instagram. What Elemis face oil are you using? Nura Fazan is asking me that. I use, oh shoot, it's in the bathroom. It is the, I would have to go grab it. Another one that works if you guys don't want to spend money on that is you can use rosehip seed oil. I get this on Amazon, on some holistic grocery stores have it. This is a great oil that you can use as well. It's it's easy on the skin, doesn't break me out. It's um, cheap, it works great. So that's another one too, so yes. <laughs> Someone said over here, love your dinners, Mylena. Mylena. I feel you, Mylena, girl. I love cooking. <laughs> Excuse me, Cheeky Live, what color is this lipstick? This one was, shoot, which one did I put on? It was Lively? No. Vain? I think it was Vain or Risqué. One of those two. <laughs> I'm going to wipe it off just so you can see how it stains. Very pigmented. Daniela over here is asking, what's a good moisturizer? My skin is dry and my foundation gets lumpy. I would, again, use oils. We do we do not use enough oils in our skincare routine. Even if you have oily skin, you can use oils as long as you're not using a ton of it. But if you have dry skin, put this down. Mix it with your moisturizer. Put your moisturizer on or use this alone. If I'm having a dry day or I have dry patches on my skin, I will always take, um, let me show you how I do it. I take a buffing brush like this. <clears throat> Sorry, hold on. Voice is getting cracked, you guys. Okay, I take a buffing brush like this guy. You're gonna take your oil. You're going to put it on your brush. Just kind of dab it in there and I'm going to buff it into my skin just like this. And oil also works great as a makeup remover. If you guys are, you know, we're all isolated. We have limited resources now. We're running out of stuff at this point. You need a good makeup remover. Maybe you're out of face wash or you don't have anything to get it off your skin. Use an oil. Don't use cooking oil. <laughs> don't use olive oil, canola. But if you have an oil like this somewhere in your medicine cabinet or in your, your skincare routine, this can be a makeup remover. Okay, so I put the oil down and look how smooth and soft my skin is. Now, if I were to go in and put this foundation on top, let's use our, let's use L'Oreal True Match. We're gonna use a, a budget friendly one. Just gonna pour some on here. I've got this. When I go to buff it down, look how that's covering everything. Do you see how that's blending beauty beautifully into the skin? Because the oil down there is creating a barrier to give my skin a really nice canvas. Do you guys see that? And that's another trick too, if you don't have a dewy foundation, but you want one and you don't want to go spend money and buy another one and all of that, take your matte foundation you already have, mix oil in with it, or put oil down first, put your foundation on top and blend it. It's going to make it look dewy because it has oil in there. And then if you really want to go dewy with your foundation, you could take your same brush. You can go in with like a shimmer shadow, like the foil shadows. I am making a hot mess down here. <laughs> I could take a foil shadow. I can dip my brush into something close to my skin would be like starry eyed. So pick up some of that on your brush, some sort of shimmer shadow, a foil, and I can buff this on top. And look at that. That look how look how nice and glowy my arm is. Look how crusty this one looks. Let me show you. Crusty. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> so there's some tips there. Kimberly over here is asking, what brush are you using? I love the handle. This is an old one I've had. Sephora Pro Slanted Buffing. I don't know. Pro Slanted Buffing Brush. Number 80, number 88. It's from Sephora. It's a good, it's big. This is no joke. This is like, we aren't messing around today. This is a big boy. <laughs> Aw, Jenny, I'm so glad I caught you live. It's almost 10 p.m. there. Time does not matter in isolation days <laughs> at all. <laughs> Let me come back over here on Instagram. I am Karen Preet. 
every time I bake underneath my eyes, my foundation gets too dry and cakey. I don't recommend baking at all for under the eyes. I haven't been a fan of baking since it came out. It's just my personal print preference because it can add a lot of powder on there. I would honestly just apply a little bit of concealer foundation, do just a light powder on top and you're good to go on that one. So yeah, <laughs> Debbie Green is asking what colors work best for gray eyes. So gray eyes tend to be very cool. So I like to go opposite of that and go warm. So if I'm looking at the color wheel gray, is basically like a light bluish purple color. So gray eyes are gonna be somewhere down here. So I would go opposite, which is gonna be your oranges. So I like doing um, Morocco, Chickadee, Brick House. If I want some good neutrals, I will do some more browns. So I would do like um, Cheetah Bear, Honey Badger, Creme Brulee. I would do this row right here. This looks really good on blue and gray eyes. Yes. <laughs> Let me go over more questions over here. Um, sorry. Let's see. Can you wear a smoky eye with a wine red lip? Days Sarahi. Sarah, hi, is asking that. Yes, you can. It's going to be very powerful, very strong, but it looks really beautiful. So yeah, you can do that. Um, will you be coming out with a mascara? Yes. I have a really cool concept that I think hope you guys will like I don't know when it's going to launch yet it depends on the timing of everything with a lot of labs being shut down right now I don't know so, so we're working on one I don't know when <laughs> my lips are very dry Gigi saying what do you suggest again the oil let me show you guys I do this every day when I get ready I take a little bit of oil and I put a couple drops on my finger and I rub it in because my lips are super, super dry all the time. So I do that first as I'm doing my foundation and my other makeup. I always put a lip oil down. I let it sit so it has time to soak in and soften my lips. So by the time I'm done with my face, I can then put my lip stuff on and it works a lot better. I got to fill this brow in. This is really driving me nuts. You can see it on the camera. I'm like, it looks bald right there. What is going on? hate when it happens. There we go. <laughs> Any tips for foundation settling on smile lines? The same thing that we said under the eyes, I would go in with a primer and apply it around here and then take your sponge and really get in there and just really pat it down and get your foundation so that way it kind of sits on top of the skin and blends in really well. Um, but using a little bit of primer first, that's a diamethicone based one works really good. So Yes. <laughs> Let me take a couple more questions. And because we're at the half hour mark, I'll stop there. Um, will you ship the new orders in April? That is our plan. Um, thanks for being patient, you guys. We've had, um, you know, our team, we stopped working over a week ago to keep everyone safe just because we didn't want to risk anyone getting anything. Um, so our plan is to, as soon as we're able to go back to work, we'll start shipping out everything that we can. We'll, we'll go as fast as we, we are physically able. <laughs> All right, one last question. Do I pick one from Instagram over here? Let me see. Ooh, there's a lot of questions over here. Let me see. Um, let's see. What color? We talked about colors for um, green eyes. We talked about foundations. Is it safe to buy makeup for anywhere at this time? Monique Harris is saying, I do feel so. I don't think that um, anything is changing as far as production goes is pretty much stock that everyone has on hand anyway. So I would think that it's pretty okay to do that. So, um, let's see. One last one said, everyone's saying, hi, where's Nick on here? Hi, Nick. How are you? <laughs> um, Mary Hudson, do you think that some people just can't wear eyeshadow under their eyes? Every time I try to put shadow under my eyes, it looks bad. Is there certain eye shapes that do it? You don't have to wear eyeshadow under your eyes. It's not for everyone. If you feel it doesn't work for your eyes, don't feel like you have to do it. Um, sometimes what it could be is that maybe you're going too dark with the shadow. So if I put a lot of dark shadow under here, it can make my eyes look heavy and tired. So maybe if you want to try it again, go with a little bit lighter of a shade and just really blend it out and smoke it. I like using a pencil brush or like an outer V brush that we have something like this. Do you see how it's kind of a dome? And what I like to do is just really blend it down. So if I'm gonna take like um, 
my favorite under the eyes is, is Cheetah Bear. It's like a warm brown. And I like to, it's not too dark, but it's dark enough. If you have deeper skin, I would go down one and go to like um, Coffee Before Talkie or Dark Roasted. If you have even lighter skin than me, go up one and go to Honey Badger. But do you see how I'm really smoking it out? And you can always go in with a bigger brush like this and just buff it. It's all about softening it in the application and just really blending it out like that. So hopefully that makes sense, you guys. But I hope this Q&A was helpful for you guys. As long as baby stays in here and cooperates with me, I'd like to keep doing some Q&A every Sunday at one o'clock Pacific time, just because it's fun for me to get to answer you guys' questions and demo everything. So I hope it was fun for you guys too. Um, so come back next week on Sunday. Instagram and YouTube will do it on here and then I'll have my standard makeup classes on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time on YouTube. Our class for this Thursday is going to be about eye colors. What eye colors are best for each eye? I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to show you. We're going to talk about color theory. Um, we're going to go really in depth on eye colors and what shadows you should be wearing based on your eye color. So that's next Thursday. So Thanks, you guys, for joining. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and washing your hands and eating what you can out of that pantry, <laughs> having fun on Netflix. So <laughs> thanks, you guys. I will talk to you soon. Bye.